There was a time when I started, it was very, very young. Take a look at it today, and the women's game, very much in demand. Women's basketball obviously has grown tremendously. The grass grows where it's watered. It's like a snowball effect. It's gonna keep rolling and keep growing. We're at a place where it's busted through the seams. People want more and more and more and more. You're not gonna see a season like this probably for a really long time. Come on, let's get loose, time to work. But off the rip, hard work, hard work. Three women weave, let's get it, let's get it. Let's get it, hard work on three. One, two, three, let's go! Well, we have a lot of goals. This year is a little different from other years. Our basketball program wasn't always the strongest. So now for us to be in a place where every year we're kind of competing for championships, is that's just an honor in itself. But now being the favorites, it's going to be a lot. For us, it's going to start in practice. Come on, active! Active on the ball! All right, all right, all right bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. We got to be ready to work now. Come on, we got to be ready to work. All right, we're going through the motions, 75%. We've been hunters for quite a long time, and now we're going to be the hunted, and everybody has to know what that feels like. Ball, ball, ball. All right, don't stop following me. <laughs> we just had a huge addition with Diamond Johnson with the, with the transfer rules. Diamond came in from day one and kind of bought into our culture and what exactly we were looking for. From a leadership standpoint, she's in the gym every day. She's not good by accident. Sometimes you can see somebody who's just really talented. For her, she's in the gym every day. Oh, Corey! Give me that! Well, I just want to be the best version of myself. Come in here and work hard every day, keep the confidence, keep the motivation, and just being a good teammate, making sure my team feels good and know that I got their backs. These past months, I've learned a lot about this team. I learned a lot about HBCUs, and it's a fight for sure. Nobody's projecting us to do what our goals are. So just fighting against those odds and just believing in ourselves and just staying together so we can accomplish that goal and shock the world. Well, you know, we, we come from a one-bit league, you know, so it's a little bit different. Non-conference doesn't really matter. Regular season, um, even though we enjoy the, the trophies from them, they don't really matter. For us, our season kind of boils down into one week. So for us to get to March Madness, we know what that week entails and the focus. So, you know, we're excited about the challenge and what comes with it, but I feel like we're ready. It would mean the most, honestly, if we can go to the tournament two times in a row. I just think it's important because as an HBCU, being able to go to the tournament is always an honor. And having that feeling last year is not comparable to any other feeling. So wanting that back motivates us. We just know that it's us against everybody. So when we do get the odds against us, it's like we thrive off that more than when we in people's favor. Well, we understand nobody's went back to back in our league in 10 years. So we're confident, but we want to be urgent as well with the things that we do, but we feel good. As of lately, I've seen my team work way harder than before, and they know like every time you step on the floor, there's nothing that should be left there. If I lose a game because something went wrong or we didn't win, it's fine, but I want to know that I left everything on the floor. I don't have no regrets, and I feel like everybody's playing in that headspace.
One word for this team would be motivated. We gave them our goals early. They don't scoff at the goals, no matter how lofty they may be. They're like, oh, if he believes, we believe. And so we're believing that we can get done what we need to get done and, and play a march and on that grand stage once again. Fields goes downhill, and she puts the Spartans on the board. Diamond Johnson will pull the three in the face of Kiark Creek. Warren for three, and it's good, Christy. She's just so tough. She was able to bring this game back within two. Grab your snacks and settle in. These players are ready to play. Bokiar Wheeler coming right out of that timeout with vengeance. Ready to put the team on her back. Richards thought about another one. And a beautiful pass down low to Paris Mullins. And Ayanna Warren currently leading all Bison scores with 12 points. Find Kiara Wheeler. Wheeler on three players scores yet again. That's 19 points for Kiara Wheeler. Fields. Off kilter shot. Sky Robinson gets the rebound. Diamond Johnson for three. And the entire building erupts. I'm just, I'm just happy. You can't even really put this into words. You know, I, when we won the regular season, I didn't really feel anything. Maybe because we kind of knew we had that in the back. But this feels amazing. All right, and again, if we get a switch, if you do your job and get a switch, okay, so Emma's rolled here, she reads. If you've got the switch, she's just gonna dive right to here and you're gonna attack with your left hand. Okay, got it? Go, go, wave. I think we've achieved at a, at a level that we probably could have expected, but even though we have an experienced group, I also know that there's plenty of room for growth. We have a lot of quality wins already, and. Our resume is really good at this time. Good, snap passes. Good, Mickey. We're in a great shape based on who we've played and the wins that we have, but you always want to add to that resume. So we got to keep improving and, and keep finding ways to win. We have a lot of returning pieces. We're a group that I think functions well together. We have great chemistry off the court, and I think we have a group that wants to continue to get better and has high goals. I think we're all just really bought into the program, into the coaching staff, and just everything that surrounds Creighton women's basketball. Right when you step foot on campus, you kind of can just like feel the family vibe and just like the best friend relationships that you're gonna get on your team. Rooster, any words of wisdom for us? 
No, I'm excited for Mal's joke though. Okay, what what do what do clouds wear under their pants? Underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Underwear. Yeah. There you go. Good job, Brett. Good. Good talk. Good talk. One. Good. Go. Hey, double key, double, double. We've played with each other for a really long time. Even our younger players, you know, they know the system well. We all work together well, and that makes us a hard team to beat. And I feel like experience and just playing smart basketball will carry you far. Three, two, one. Well, we want to compete at the top of our league, and our goal is to get to the NCAA tournament and win multiple games. I think that's an achievable goal. I think it's something that our players who were here two years ago when we went to the Elite Eight, they have an idea of what that looks like, the work that we're going to have to put in. We have been pretty consistent with our goals over the last four years, especially with us seniors that have been here. Sophomore year, we made it to the Elite Eight. Last year was a little bit of a disappointing run in that, losing first round. Last year we had an early exit, and so I think we have a lot to prove this year. To do well, you know, means a lot. Every game matters, especially when it comes to the seating in March. And so just trying to achieve all that we can there, you know, obviously our goal is to win a conference championship, and I think we can do that. Morgan Molly. <laughs> Lauren Jensen. That's a wild shot that falls. Mogensen got a step. Mogensen made the shot. Jensen with the give. Molly and one. Time out. Tony Vitella. Satterfield says why not. And smashes it home. Seton Hall will lead by one at the half. Creighton sets the tone to the second half. Great hands it off to Jensen, automatic. Creighton retakes the lead. Gray hit three threes in the first quarter. This time, Gray drives and hits Micah Gray. With five. With three, it's Jensen. Lauren Jensen, exclamation point. For the Jays. The Creighton Blue Jays. Championship Monday. We got one down, we got two to go, so make sure we're doing what we can tonight to make sure that we're the best that we can be at five o'clock tomorrow. I think the team's at a really good place, but going into March, it's kind of just locking in. The Big East is such a talented conference that it's kind of anyone can win on a given night if you don't come play your best basketball. Just focusing on one opponent at a time is going to be huge. You've got to have everybody on complete focus. I also know our players are here for business, but it's sticking together and being connected.
Big sign, Keani Lockett. This second unit can get back within single digits. Got it! Harshaw out of nowhere! Harshaw. Ransom left open, and Kelsey Ransom hits. With four. Lauren Jensen, the steady presence, heaves. For pick second to last in the Big East. Now for the first time ever, the Georgetown Hoyas are heading to the Big East Championship game. You know, they defended us really well. We just couldn't get into any offensive rhythm. Uh, but I didn't think we did a good enough job sharing the ball with our, with our core kids. So went with that other group and I thought they did a great job of moving the ball and sharing the ball and so I think it's a good lesson for us. That's just part of basketball is you know you don't have it every night. Losses aren't bad things if you if you take things from them and, and use them as fuel to get better. You know we've had a great year 25 and 5 and we're going to be playing uh, again. When you're a mid-major, getting at larges in women's basketball is very, very difficult. Even when you have like top 25 wins and you have a really good net that looks like you should be in the tournament, it's still a situation where as a mid-major you're, you're never comfortable with being in unless you get that automatic berth. And the only way to get the automatic is to win your conference tournament. And for us, the team that wins the regular season gets the host of the tournament. We've won the conference the last couple of years, every year since I've been here, and I think it's just the FGCU tradition. We have that mindset that we want to win and everyone's going to come for us, so being able to win in our tournament and celebrate that win, because a lot of people don't get to experience that and make it to the big dance. Honestly, I don't think it's a pressure just to win the conference every single year. I think it's an expectation coming in when you are an FGCU Eagle. It's really been tough watching from the sidelines, but I've been able to kind of be a coach, just kind of relating to my teammates from a player standpoint and kind of relaying the coach's message and just continue to cheer on my teammates and do whatever I can to support the team. So just making sure that we play our game and hold ourselves to the expectation and the level of play that we know how to play that we're able to succeed. It's win or go home, so every single day we put our shoes on, plan for each other. It would be great to make it, but we're looking to get better and do the things that we need to win. Amani is a special talent. I mean, she's super fast. She's a great defender. To be player of the year and defensive player of the year in the conference, I mean, just shows all the respect she has from other coaches, and uh, we're going to need her to have some great games going forward. game plan, they, they executed it really well, the intensity was good, the communication was good, we weren't giving up a lot of easy shots, we had uh, several players make huge plays for us. 
We followed a game plan and we just locked in to make a big second half run. Hard fought win tonight. I was proud of them and the work's not done. We're gonna get ready for this uh, championship game. This is March basketball. Anything can happen, that's why everybody loves March Madness. We know what we have to do. We just have to be prepared to play our best basketball on Saturday. People doubt us a lot just because we're FGCU. You know, we, they think that we have a little name, but we've done a lot in March, and I think that we're just gonna make a big run. We have that grit, we have that drive, and we just know how to play basketball the right way. The tournament's a special time and not something that everyone gets to do. I think it's really important that we do show that mid-majors can hang with the bigger schools. We want to do the ASUN well and make sure that everyone knows that we can do it and we're not just there because we're in a mid-major. Anytime we win a big game or conference tournament or NCAA tournament, one of the biggest joys as a coach is just getting to see your team celebrate, that they know that they put in the effort and they're enjoying that moment. 